And it is our duty to protect our families, to protect our friends, to protect ourselves because of the purpose that God has assigned us to. We can't just die before our time. We can't die premature deaths. We cannot allow that in the name of Jesus. And I declare and I decree that you will not die a premature death. I declare and I decree that everything that the enemy has taken from you will be restored to you a hundredfold in the name of Jesus. I declare and I decree that your children, your children's children, your parents, your workmates are protected. Your friends are protected in the name of Jesus. They are covered by a hedge of protection by the blood of Jesus and no weapon formed against them will ever prosper in Jesus' name. Hey guys, what's up and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am so excited to have you here. And if it's the first time, I want to say welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, I want to say thank you for being as loyal as you are. Today, I'm really grieved, you know, at how as Christians, so many times we are going after prophecies from different men and women of God. And sometimes we are so busy serving that we forget to actually have a relationship with God. And sometimes we lack the spirit of discernment such that we end up being in places that we're not supposed to be only because we do not have that relationship with God. So I'm going to jump right into today's word, which is basically being vigilant or staying rooted in your relationship with God. So I watched a movie on Netflix titled Living in Bondage, Breaking Free. And, you know, that movie was generally showing how, you know, sometimes we want good things without working for them. Or sometimes we we get get into a relationship and we're not inquisitive enough to ask how that person is making money. Sometimes you actually know that this person is always at home, always sleeping. But then you find yourself being taken to fancy places, being given fancy gifts. Yet you really know that the way that they are sleeping at home all day does not, I mean, it's not directly proportional to the results that they're giving. And you know how life works, that you reap what you sow. And somehow you have to open your eyes. Be inquisitive about everything. Don't just take everything at face value. Like, really think about it. Think about something. When you see something, don't just accept every piece of information that people give you. But really just think about it. You know, not only think about it, but we need to remain in God's presence. Like when we are led by the Spirit of God, when we move in the Spirit, then we'll be able to know when something is not of God. Like you know how you can literally get into a relationship with someone who's been in a cult or who is actually still in a cult. And simply because you're not prayerful enough, you're not strong enough, it means that you know, you can be attacked and you can blindly entrap yourself to such a situation. As business opportunities and new doors open in our lives, we should also really just open our eyes, ask God to open our eyes to be led by the Spirit of God so that we do not fall into the wrong traps. Sometimes we want to be mentored by these great men and women, yet what we don't know is the Spirit that's operating in them. And once we are close to that person, once we eat with those people, once we are dining with those people, and it, it means that we are also exposed to whatever spirits, whatever gods that they're worshipping. So it's very important that even in trying to get business deals, to get rich, which like I said, we all want, it's very important that we we stay rooted in God's word and really see that is this in, in alignment with what God says about kingdom economics? Is this in, uh, in alignment with the principles that are written in the word? Especially if you read the book of Proverbs, it tells everything from loyalty, integrity, pride, all of that, like everything is your end. Those are some of the things that you can use to test if this person is authentically from God. But now when you're in a deep relationship with God, it's so easy for you to, like, have you ever gotten into a taxi and you, you, your heart really starts, you know, pumping fast and you just know that something is off in this place. Like, I need you and I to get to that place whereby you can immediately tell when you get into a certain place that something is off about it. 
and you immediately start praying if especially if you can pray in tongues you start praying in tongues you start praying in tongues and denounce every power of the enemy call on the name of jesus call on the blood of jesus it literally works in our favor the blood of jesus the name of jesus is the name that is above every other name and it's there to work in our favor and it's our place to use it because it's been given to us for free because of the grace that God has actually given to us. I remember a mentor of mine, one whom I love so much, actually asked me what church I was fellowshipping with. And at that time, I was like, ah, I've just been visiting churches. So I was like, ah, no, I want you to try this church. I went there. Though my mentor had told me to go to that particular church, I could feel that it was not for me. I could feel that this is not where God wanted me to be. Up till now, I don't know what God saved me from, but I know that he saved me from something in that place. And also the other thing is that they didn't actually refer to scripture in whatever messages that they were preaching. And I realized, okay, this is not a Bible-based church, and I can't stay in this place. And neither can you stay in a church that is not Bible-based. You really, really have to check such things like their faithfulness to god if they are really bible based and rooted like if they are not just after money but are truly after the heart of god i know of a certain guy who was sharing his story and was talking about how they were in a particular cult and he went with somebody else and this person was like you know i started my church but when i started my church there are certain people that are giving me troubles like they're troubling me and the account leader was like, show me pictures of these people. He actually showed pictures of these people. And the account leader was like, ah, this one is actually spiritually weak. Yes, she's a Christian, but she is spiritually weak. And he was like, just give me this, this, this little amount of money. By the time you go back to your country, this person will be dead. So we need to be spiritually fit, to literally be always ready to fight with whatever things in the spirit that we don't even see that we are fighting against but really just remain rooted in god and really see god earnestly pray 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 if you can pray in tongues always pray in tongues if you start your day like just five minutes of tongues purely tongues you don't know what tongues can save you from because it is the holy spirit that is praying through you and if the holy spirit is praying through you, you could be saved from something bad that was going to happen that day but because you prayed in the spirit then you know that you're covered and protected in God. The other thing is that God absolutely loves us so much and sometimes he reveals things to us even in our dreams just the same way he did with Joseph where he actually showed him how he was going to reign and be a great man. But sometimes we ignore our dreams or we just wake up and you're like, ah, you know what, I don't even remember what I dreamt of. But it is our place to ask the Holy Spirit to remind us of what we dreamt. You know that everything in your dream is significant. Literally everything in your dream is significant. Things like dirty water, being bitten by a snake. And things that are not good and maybe drinking dirty water or drowning in a dream or things like that or being bitten by bees such things are not good dreams or sexual dreams and because we mostly don't believe in dreams just like ah wahala it doesn't matter you know but it's just a dream but so many times the enemy even operates in our dreams so we really have to be careful that even as we dream of such bad dreams wake up and immediately denounce them in the name of jesus because they have no power over us i remember like two months ago i had a dream whereby i was beaten by two snakes like one was right here and the other on my arm like it literally shredded through like half of my i had an afro in that dream and it literally shredded through like half of my head my scalp and I woke up in that dream and also like the feeling that you get as soon as you wake up from that dream to tell you that something bad is about to happen. Also, God can, of course, use dreams to tell us good things that are about to happen. But today I'm particularly talking about the bad things. So my heart was really pumping fast and I could really tell that something was off. It didn't happen then, but I began to speak a word over that dream in the name of Jesus. I spoke over it i told my mom we prayed against it and i only realized later on that both my mom and i literally fell sick like 
deathbed sick and for me it had been like two years since I ever even caught a cold or anything but at this very moment I was so sick and I was like thank you Jesus for showing me and protecting me and I just knew it was that dream it was that dream like something could have happened but because I chose to listen and follow through with that dream I got the revelation that I needed that something bad was about to happen and I had to pray and fast against it and I prayed and fasted against it. Sometimes you even receive the prompting of the Holy Spirit to fast after certain dreams and it is our duty to protect our families, to protect our friends, to protect ourselves because of the purpose that God has assigned us to. We can't just die before our time. We can't die premature deaths. We cannot allow that in the name of Jesus and I declare and I decree that you will not die a premature death. I declare and I decree that everything that the enemy has taken from you will be restored to you a hundredfold in the name of Jesus. I declare and I decree that your children, your children's children, your parents, your witness are protected protected your friends are protected in the name of jesus they are covered by a hedge of protection by the blood of jesus and no weapon formed against them will ever prosper in jesus name have you ever been in a situation where people are like deja vu like i once saw the sometimes actually the dreams that we've dreamt before where god showed us something that was gonna happen something that would have been silly and i know we just call it deja vu but it's also how god has probably spoken to you in a dream so if you can sleep with a notebook beside your bed and quickly jot down every dream that you have some other time you'll be able to look back and say but god showed me this or the times that god showed you standing in front of a large stage and preaching to people and when it finally happens you're like god you're so faithful i saw this in that dream and you came through so for more stuff about interpretation of dreams please do watch a sermon by pastor stephanie Ike called interpretation of dreams which i'll put its link in the description below and a friend of mine catch up with Fazi, actually said this word the word of god is prophetic in itself don't seek prophecy hear god for yourself seek god and i really thought that was profound because sometimes we get lost in the process of trying to seek a prophecy i know that prophecies are meant to encourage us and restore hope but now when it becomes our main focus as compared to worshiping god it's important that you know the word of god is god breathed and when we actually study the word as for revelation that is relevant in our own lives then we're actually able to use that word as a prophetic word it is the logos you understand like the word of god is the logos and once a specific revelation has been given to you from that logos that word then it becomes a rhema word which is specific for you specific for your situation you can't let yourself die we can't just live life blindly we have to be spiritually alert and I pray for you today that you may be covered by God, that God may protect you, that you may be vigilant and continue to seek God earnestly in all things. I absolutely love you so much and may God bless you, increase you, protect you and your loved ones and cover you in the blood of Jesus. I love you so much. Bye. Bye.